Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we have Chris Stone, Kingfish Ingram, and this is going to be coming from last year and he's going to be playing through Don't Let the Devil Ride. So let's get Chris Stone up on screen and see how he gets on. <laughs> going to jump in here even though he says don't do it just because of the playing I think everybody knows what I'm going to say first of all his control of vibrato and all the top blues players had that control and just all top players full stop have the control and that's something that you'll just see across the board and the way that he introduces the track at the beginning, he says that this is a track that we play at church and it can also be a blues track. And if this is what they're playing in churches, then I got to go to church <laughs> because you wouldn't get me out of that place. I mean, such great feel. And I mean, the band here as well. Half the time I'm looking at the bassist in the background because he's laying down some serious groove with the drummer here. And Chris Stone's playing over the top of it, of course, is that cherry on top. But it's such a solid outfit here. But getting into Chris Stone's playing and his singing, he's got that classic blues voice. And one other thing that you'll notice with blues players is when they are singing, they play chords or they'll play very much a limited amount whilst they're singing and then they go to the guitar in between the vocal phrases almost like a call and response where your vocal is the call and then the guitar gives a response and certainly got that in this video and it's one of those things that you'll notice about all those top blues players bb king was one of those as well who sometimes wouldn't even just play any chords he was famous for not playing chords he'd just come in with that lead guitar line when he's not singing and then get back to the vocals but of course chris stone here is actually playing the chords 
chords. So he's still supplying that rhythm in the background. And I know that he was heavily influenced by Muddy Waters when he was learning to play because his dad showed him a PBS documentary on Muddy. And you can find Muddy on this channel if you don't know who that is and you want a little bit of an example of his playing. Another thing you'll notice is when Chris Stone's playing lead, he's got quite a heavy tone. There's quite a lot of overdrive on there. But we're also going to be treated to some of his clean playing later on in this performance. It's interesting that this is just a phone video, but the sound is great. In fact, I say that the sound of this video is actually better than some of the TV shows that you see where the mix you get is awful, but this person just holding a phone and filming it is getting a great sound, so I don't know how they can mess it up on TV shows, but they seem to do it regularly somehow. But let's get back into it. jump in here because I was going to say how difficult it is to keep the blues interesting especially when it goes on for maybe six or seven or eight minutes because sometimes a player who has a certain amount of licks and lines that they've learned gets to the point where 
They now have to repeat all the lines that they've already played. Whereas great players don't learn lines, they're constantly making up new ones just on the fly. And you very much get the impression that that's what Chris Stone is doing here because of the way that he then suddenly changed into that really major based line and really focused on the major scale rather than going back to that blue scale. And then, sure enough, after that, he went back into the blue scale. But of course, changing the dynamics as he has, like I said, totally getting rid of that overdrive sound. And now it's just really clean to the point where he's now applying palm muting and he's playing through his lead. It's really exposing every single note and not exposing his playing because his playing is absolutely got down. So he can just apply any technique he wants to and go as clean as he wants to and is never going to sound bad and that's one thing that I always say when I'm teaching to students is always practice and play on a clean tone because if you can make that sound good then you're sorted that's it everything else will just be an embellishment of your playing and will just add to your sound and the way that he also changes his tone with the wah wah pedal that he's got just by opening it ever so slightly to give his guitar a little bit more of a biting trebly sound and that's something that you can do if you play live and you don't want to go all the way over to your amp all the time just get a wah wah pedal and just leave it all the way open for that really aggressive bright lead sound but then if you want a more mellow sound just close it all the way and you can just leave it halfway just to get a nice balance between those two but in terms of that wah wah chris stone doesn't use it a great deal he does have little sections so so he just dotted it in there just to keep it interesting to give you a slightly different look on that lead guitar and this is a great example of how to play lead guitar not only changing your lines up all the time and just literally making it up as you go along extemporizing over that blues progression but also using the dynamic changes in your playing to keep it interesting and Chris Stone if we're analyzing it here has gone from a clean muted rhythm sound into a dirty lead tone coming back to that clean rhythm sound then he's gone into that wah wah he's actually changed the tone in sections with that wah wah pedal now he's gone to a clean lead tone and now he's palm muting lead so he's doing so many things in the six minutes that we've seen so far to keep it interesting but of course the most interesting thing of all is the playing being able to keep you interested by varying your playing so much that it's not samey and Chris Stone is so great at doing that but let's watch it to the end. And again, going back to that wah-wah pedal to finish with. And something that I want to point out, whenever you see a performance, a live performance by any top band, you always have that dynamic change and you never ever see anyone who's half decent finishing a song with a low dynamic kind of feel to it. So imagine if Chris Stone finished the track when he was just palm muting those notes 
it would be such a flat finish and that's what it's all about. A great example here of when you are in that really quiet place, how before the end of the song, you wanna take it right back up to the top of that mountain, get that crescendo. And I know that everybody watching this will notice that Chris Stone is a big guy. And I did see a little excerpt from a show that he was on with his mum, where they were talking to a motivational speaker or somebody who helps with weight loss, or at least helps people to get their mind in gear to lose weight. And Chris Stone was on that so he's definitely aware that he is overweight and needs to lose weight and I know that sometimes when people do gain a lot of weight it can be linked with a particular emotional state or something that they find in food that is like a comfort and with Chris Stone I did see that show where he was with his mum and he was very quiet and I've seen an interview with him as well and he's just a very shy guy, or he seems that way, and as soon as he gets up on stage, it's like he's now just letting go and can really express himself through the music and through his guitar and through his playing. And that's what the blues is all about, being able to channel that emotion from inside you out. And I think that's why he's such a great player, because he's certainly got that emotion inside him and he can translate that onto the fretboard. I did used to be a personal trainer when I was 18 and 19. I did that for two years. So I've seen firsthand the problems that people can have. And I have trained people in order to get their weight down who are overweight or obese. So I've seen both sides of it. And I know that it's so much easier said than done. But Chris Stone's still a young guy. He's only 19 or 20. So he's got time on his side. I hope that he manages to make some inroads on that side of things but back to the guitar playing because his ability on the fretboard can't be denied I mean he's already played with Eric Gales and Samantha Fish and his last single which you can see on his website was recorded with Buddy Guy so Buddy is on this channel as well so he's certainly mixing in the right circles and I'm sure a lot of people that he plays with have a look at Chris Stone's playing and actually try and work out a few of his licks because he's got some great lines going on there but a great performance here. And I love these videos that are just recorded on a phone because it gives you a real appreciation of an artist's live ability and talent. And it's not one of those videos that's always post-produced by the record labels who start to put auto-tune and mess with so many things when their artist has a live video, it always gets post-produced, but it's great to see these little phone videos. So thank you so much for suggesting Chris Stone to have a look at tonight and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Ra